What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Jiu-Jitsu Radio. Today, uh, we're kind of throwing things a little bit outside of our routine, um, where it's it's definitely going to be a little bit more of a serious podcast. Um, this one is actually kind of tough for us because we know a lot of the people involved in the discussion that we're going to have today. So as a disclaimer, um, we just want you all to know that we are not lawyers. We're not investigative reporters. Um, everything that we're talking about today is strictly based off of the information that has been presented to us that has been posted over the last week uh, and some of the information that's been out in the past. Um, it is not our job to, um, you know, to to be Inspector Gadget on this one. We just want to have a discussion as unbiased as possible, but as honest as possible with everything that's going on here. So, you know, we just have to be extremely careful uh, of what we're going to say and how we're going to say it. So if it sounds like we're being a little bit slow on it, it's, you know, it's not like we're sleepy or anything. It's just that we have to be extremely careful on what we say and how we say it. Um, Sean, is there anything you want to add to that before uh, we yeah, get going? It's, yeah, it's not our place to assign guilt or innocence. Um, that is not our place. Uh, we're simply going to talk about the facts and that we that are public and that we know. Uh, we're not going to make any kind of uh, any call or any kind of you know uh, uh, moral judgment on anybody. We're just going to have to talk about what's going on. Right. So. With that being said, um, you know, we just want to let everybody uh, like know that, listen, we're not here to um, we're not here to, to sit there and really throw clickbait BS out there. We're not here to, you know, clout chase off of whatever is going on right now. We just know that this is something that needs to be discussed and it can't be just brushed away. Um, Sean and I, particularly with this subject and the people involved, we're running a very high risk of uh, potentially losing friends or uh, people that we know. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's... Again, we, we are going to be as honest as possible on our opinion and what we think and what we feel on this. Um, if that's what happens, so be it. But at the end of the day, you know, the, the people that we know, um, the ones that care about us as much as we care about them, they'll know. And, you know, it, hopefully people will respect our opinions and understand that we're having a discussion. Um, and there, at the end of the day, there's nothing that we can do about it. Um, you know, events happen that happen. Um, you can't get mad at someone for discussing the events that actually happen and things that people are said. We're just here to discuss it because it is too important to the jujitsu community for us to ignore it. And right off the bat, I want to say that there's a lot of jujitsu uh, news outlets uh, out there that should be absolutely ashamed at pretending to be reporters, uh, pretending to be, you know, um, keepers of information or spreading information with unbiased intent when that's not the case. Because it's very, very clear that there's a lot of bias going on out there right now. And there's a lot of people choosing sides over politics. We know there's a ton and ton of politics in jujitsu. So those people should be extremely ashamed of themselves because the, the stuff that's happening right now needs to be discussed and all the information needs to go out there. Um, again, this is, this is going to be a difficult subject for us, but I think we're just going to get it started um, to let you guys know what's going on. Um, Sean, from your point of view, should we, because we didn't really discuss this part, should we start with what happened this week or should we give a little bit of a background story of what all this situation is about. Um, well, I think it's best to start with the situation. Um, okay. So, 
Okay. Oh, you mean so like the very, very beginning or what happened this week? Well, uh, it has to be, I think, the very beginning, what, what, where it all stems from. Okay. So, no, you're right. So, um, okay. And, and that's it's true because this is going to be something that a lot of people are new to jiu-jitsu. Um, so, I think a lot of people have no clue what's going on. A lot of people don't even know a, the, the players in this whole scenario. Um, so, I think a little bit of a, a background uh, story on this will, will help out. I mean, it's been three years now since the initial events uh, in discussion. And a lot of you white belts, blue belts, maybe even purple belts have no clue uh, that any of this happened. Uh, and if you don't know, you don't know where the information is going to be. So in March of 2018, a jiu-jitsu black belt by the name of Marcel Goncalves was arrested uh, under the uh, accusations of um, sexual assault on a minor. Uh, what we're going to do is I will, I will actually play the uh, original news report that was played on TV. Um, so you can hear directly from the news and then I'll actually pull up an article. I'll read you guys an article so you can see for yourself, uh, what exactly, uh, was said. So let me go ahead and pull this up and you guys can see it for yourself. Uh, let's share. We're going to share this screen with sound. Um, okay, here we go. Let me know if, can you see my screen, Sean? I can. All right. Let me know if you can hear the sound too, just in case. Obviously here, you know, it's not something at all that is forgivable. And um, we're going to take every action so that Marcel can never do this again. A martial arts instructor is in jail tonight, accused of having sex with a teenage girl. Marcel Goncalves was an instructor at Fight Sports in Naples, where he taught both adults and children. NBC2 Shannon Clo is live from the martial arts gym after speaking with instructors. It's here where classes were canceled for children today due to the circumstances surrounding in Calvez. He is accused of having sex with a teenage girl in the studio right behind me and again twice at his house. Tonight I spoke with people who know him who say they're blindsided. It's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. Nobody here uh, ever expected that this would, this would happen. Keith Rummel is the owner of Fight Sports who hired and fired Marcel Goncalves, saying he takes no responsibility for his actions. Marcel's actions are Marcel's actions alone. He says hearing Goncalves is accused of having sex with a girl nearly half his age makes him furious. It almost like um, makes you lose faith in people. You, you think you know someone, you think, you know, and then this happens and you're just like, wow, like anyone is capable of anything. Gincalvis was arrested yesterday after Collier County deputies say the 31 year old had sex with a teenage girl twice at his house and once at work. It's hard to process. Uh, I know him for a long time. As an instructor who worked with Goncalves, Orlando Castillo says despite sexual allegations that happened here, no child should feel in danger. We're not going to let any bad happen to the kids. The martial arts studio says they're taking the matter seriously and coming up with ways to prevent harmful actions in the future. Always an extra doll supervision when there is a minor. One mother who didn't want to show her face tells me she's been bringing her son here for years. Hopefully everything will just kind of get back to normal. Even after hearing about Gun Calvez, she feels safety is secure. Still think it's a fantastic place to go, a fantastic place to, to bring your, your kids and I don't feel threatened at all by it. I reached out to his wife for a comment but have not heard back. He is expected to appear in court tomorrow for his first hearing. Live in Naples, Shannon Clo, NBC2. Okay, so that was the original uh, news report that came out. And you can see Keith Rummel. Keith Rummel is the owner of that gym. Um, it's no longer a fight sports gym anymore. Uh, I believe he uh, switched over to Evolution MMA, if I'm not correct. Uh, I apologize. I'm um, just going off of what I'm remembering at the top of my head right now. So this was very right. big. I huh? think you're right. I right. think it is evolution. Um, so this was very, very big. Um, full disclosure, I had just seen Marcel the month before at a grappling tournament. 
I had like I was taking photos of him like competing this that and the other. The second that this came out, I made it very clear that I didn't support any of this stuff, and I wiped out every photo that I ever had of him. Um, and I had known the guy like not close, like like I'd see him be like, "Hey, what's up?" Like whatever. Um, but I completely wiped out any photo that I ever had of the guy because I want nothing to do with shit scumbags like that. Um, you know, again, we talk about like I've been trying not to curse like more and more, but this actually pisses me off. Um, it's it's just sad the fact that someone was put into this position and you know by an adult. So that again, we talk about he was 31 at the time, and it happened in on three separate separate occasions. So twice at his home and once at the gym. Um, the article that came out. Um, let me see. Let me pull it up right now because there is more information on it. Um, he was picked up at the airport. He was in California um, and the feds and the cops, whatever, I guess they, they were waiting for him at the airport, picked him up at the airport. Right off the bat, Marcel admitted to, to the wrongdoing. He admitted that he did what was being alleged. Um with the response of saying that he didn't know what was wrong with him. Um, I can read you another article. This was coming off of um, BJJEE um, on March 16th, 2018. Police arrested 31-year-old BJJ instructor Marcel Goncalves of Fight Sports Naples on Tuesday for having sex with a teenager. Goncalves is married and is the head instructor of Fight Sports Naples, where the teen said they had sex. He also reportedly met at Goncalves' home. Police charged Goncalves with sexual assault and sexual battery. When confronted by deputies on Tuesday, Goncalves confessed to having sexual intercourse with a minor and stated he does not know what is wrong with him. Um, there's photos up of uh, his uh, jail photos, the same ones you saw in the, in the news article. Um, the report showed the relationship had been going on since December. Um, oh, man. It's, um, yeah. And, and the weird part is, like, I went to go look for, for more of these articles to really get, like, more information. Um, but it, it's very difficult to find. For some reason, like, it was just difficult to find the old articles. And I know that you can find that video just by doing, like, YouTube searches and stuff like that. So, okay, so that was the initial incident. From there on, um, Marcel's wife didn't leave him. She took him in. Like, uh, you know, she's there for him. They have a kid. Um, that Joe. kid, uh, what's that? At the time, they only had one kid. At the time, they only had one kid. Um, obviously, Keith Romo kicked Marcel out. Done. Cyborg had made an original statement when all of this happened. Um, saying that he did not approve of any of this and uh, kicked him out of the gym. I'm trying to find the original statement that he made because I do want to sit there and be uh, upfront and honest um, with everything that's going on. Um, the, um, the situation kind of, it didn't disappear. But, you know, Sean and I have had, unfortunately, this kind of discussion many, many times. There's been a lot of podcasts where we talked about something like this happening in jiu-jitsu schools. Um, and every well, time. Martial arts, martial arts schools in general. Martial arts schools in general, right. It's not just jiu-jitsu, uh, unfortunately. Um, this whole thing is not good for the jiu-jitsu community to begin with. So it's something that we've always been supporters of people coming out and, and speaking up about it. I personally have reached out to jujitsu times in the past and let them know that something like this was going on where there was a convicted um, child molester that was a jujitsu coach and told him that he was still coaching children and he was still around children. And jujitsu times blatantly turned me down on posting this information up and they refused 
to bring that up. So right off the bat, just with that, Jiu-Jitsu Times can go fuck themselves, all right? Because they're not going to sit there. They, they're going to post up. But I reached out to them before on something like this. And they just did not give a shit, did not matter, until it became something like popular for them to do clickbaity stuff. And they literally posted all the same information that I sent to them. So if you want real information, don't go to Jiu-Jitsu Times. Like, I'll tell you right now. They can all go fuck themselves. Anyway, um, fast forward to, um, I guess we should really talk about um, what was going on with Marcel's case. So obviously Marcel admitted to the wrongdoing. And last year they changed... um, they changed their strategy on the defense and claimed that Marcel has CTE and that because of the brain damage he got from years of fighting and stuff, that that's what caused him to make this mistake. BS. BS. Well, well we can't say BS. All we can say is we don't know. We, there's, we cannot prove that he has CTE. That no, nobody can. He says that he had several different studies, this, that, and the other. I'm not saying it's BS that he has CTE. I'm saying that it's a BS excuse to say that because he's got, if he's got CTE, that that brain damage is what caused him to go and have uh, sexual intercourse with a minor uh, or an underage person, like repeatedly. My opinion, right? right. My opinion. Um, that's whatever that's unfortunately, that's the, the legal, you know, his legal choice to do so. Um, he did end up having to change lawyers because his lawyers at the time did not agree with that, uh, defense. So he ended up having to change it. That's all fact there, there's, there's, that's out there. It's fact. Fast forward to about a week ago. Or this week, really, uh, at Wednesday. the time. Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? Yeah. Where, you know, I get a message saying, hey, you should probably go check out, see what's going on uh, with Mo Jassim. He's posting a lot of crazy stuff right now. So, okay. Uh, Mo Jassim is the, the head of ADCC. Um, obviously, the the biggest grappling tournament in the world. Um and he began posting photos um, of a conversation between him and Marcel Goncalves where uh, Marcel was accusing him of um, issues with the referees at ADCC. And I'll pull up the photos in just a minute so, so everybody can see exactly what was going on. I got specific permission from Mo Jassim to screenshot these and share them with everybody. Um, again... This is not us making these statements. This is not us. We didn't Photoshop anything, didn't do anything. Like This is just gathering the information for you all to see and you make your judgment on it. We're going to discuss it um, as, as we go. Uh, let me pull this up. Uh, that's not it. Sorry, I definitely should have been more... Uh, prepared for this we had a lot of stuff going on um, but this is something that we just uh, we just want to put out there Um, so what happened was that um, I'm trying to find the initial conversation but I will just go straight from the um, from the initial post that came out from Mo and I think do I not have that conversation? Um, I know I have somewhere I have the photos of the actual conversation between uh, Marcel and um, and Mo Jassim. Uh, in the meantime, Sean, uh, thoughts so far on everything? Um, <clears throat> thoughts so far is number one. It's a huge breach of trust between <clears throat> any instructor or anybody in any position of power to uh, use said position to uh, make any kind of gain with with their students or with those that 
because you know we've talked about this before the bottom line is is when you're an instructor in any martial art you're you're more than just an instructor you're a role model you're somebody and 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 we've talked about this before too is martial arts more than anything is almost cult-like yeah and when you have somebody in a position of power like like an instructor it gives them influence over their over their members and and unfortunately marcel took advantage of that power and uh or he either took advantage or fell fell um you know as, as per what the the court paper said felt uh, moment of weakness or whatever um it was still predicated on having that position of power and it's why i as an instructor always you know when it came when, when it comes to anybody on my mats i treat them all the same i i, I call everybody bro and and that's may sound stupid but when i'm on the mats i like to think of everybody or all my students regardless of whether they're male or female as plastic and 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 genderless but bro in my head is is genderless so i call everybody bro or i can't say guys all right change man things like that you you know just right. to, it's just it's a sad situation uh for the family uh that's involved you know it, it was it's a painful thing and it sucks that this has to happen and it sucks that it has to happen in our spirit right and and the thing is is that you know we've discussed this many times on on the podcast um as far as people in a position of power within the academy or i mean in general um using that position to To kind of gain an upper hand on someone, whether it's psychologically, physically, what, mentally, whatever way you want to look at it, emotionally, um, that's always been an issue. Um, so, okay, so I do have the other photos that really, um, that really, really started this off. So I actually need to upload these because. Um, I think a lot of media outlets do not have these photos just because it wasn't put up in time. Again, I got uh, permission to do this. So I'm going to do that in just a second. But what I was trying to say is that we've had the discussion many times on the podcast where, to me, it should be an automatic rule everywhere that there's a certain line that nobody should be able to cross as a person of power in a, a, a school so if you're a black belt there's absolutely no reason why a jiu-jitsu black belt should be having personal conversations over phone with anyone under the age of 18 that's it like to me right that's just the way that i was raised it's like there there's no reason i never found any reason and granted you know i wasn't too much under 18 uh when I got the first cell phone, you could text, but I would never find any freaking reason to be under 18 and be texting back and forth with anyone over 18 or an adult that's not my parents. There's just no reason, or maybe a relative or something, but that would never happen. Like well, to me. I, I, well, you know what though? I can't say that because. Yeah, because you're old. Well, no, I, I. Well, not only that, but you know, I talk to the boys all the time. And right, I see like even then, that's not something that be an issue because number one, you know the family. Number two, we've known them since they were damn near babies. But you also know that there's a line of the conversations that you can have with these kids, well, right? Course. But you're not a stranger you're part of the family that and that's where i'm getting at is that it's there should never be that that issue unfortunately though that's kind of what happened in this case. correct yeah that, that, 
you know, Marcel became close with this family. Right. So, I mean, we're, we're straying a little bit far off the point, but that's at least where I stand on it, right? Yeah. So this should have never happened. This should have never happened to begin with. This should have never been anything where it's like, oh, who are you texting? Oh, I'm just texting my coach. No, no, you're not having that conversation. Right. Because if we're talking about your jujitsu, then we need to discuss that as a family, because I'm the one that drives you to, to the freaking gym. I'm the one that's dri paying for it. Like, what is it that your coach is telling you you should do? Right. If that coach is thinking that they should talk to me. Right. And again, I don't even have kids. I don't even want kids. But I know if I want kids, like if I was going to do it, that's the way that I would run it. And I, I find it hard to believe that that most parents are going to disagree with me anyway. That's where all this like situation really, really got started. Um, so now again, fast forward to this week and conversations started with Marcel and Mo Jassim where Marcel was basically, basically poking and prodding at Mo. Again, this is from what I saw. This is what it seems like. If I'm wrong, go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. This is the information that that I saw and and I perceived. Um, I, you know, honestly, I don't even know if we need to get into the reasonings of why this happened. Well, no, it, it, it needs to it needs to be at least seen so people understand like the thing because here's the thing there there's got to be some kind of historical record of what happened to get this whole situation because otherwise you get to the same situation where you know. Five years down the road, like Lloyd Irvin, Irvin, everybody forgets what happened. And that shouldn't be the case. Like, this stuff needs to be paid attention to because otherwise we end up running all the same thing, right? Um, I'm going to post, I'm going to upload this photo real quick so I can uh, post it up for everybody to see. Give me one second. Um, anyway, that's, that's really where, um, God dang it, stupid Apple. Um, that's where the conversation of all this started. Um, the, the whole thing quickly, quickly escalated. Um, uh, I mean, super quickly escalated, um, to where we are today on this situation. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to have to upload it or I'm going to read it. Basically, I'll just read it because iPhone's a piece of crap when it comes to this. Let me do this. Um, here's the thing. So now it's not just it's not just now between Mo and um, and Marcel on this. Other people started getting um, involved, which should have never gotten involved. It's got nothing to do with you. You should just keep your mouth shut and just walk away. Again, my opinion, but you have, you know, free country for you to go and here you go and um, say whatever the hell you want to say. You can put your own foot in your mouth if you want. Uh, I know I'm delaying this just a little bit. I'm just trying to make sure that I get all the information. I, yeah, I, again, I, I don't think it's necessary to know why. I, I, I think the bottom line is, is Mo. Regardless of motivation, Mo decided to call out what's going on. Correct. And, so, and so here then I'll I'll do this. So then I'll put Mo's posts up there. No, see because I think it still needs to. There is something on here that needs to um, be read by everybody because then they can see the mindset of what. Why don't we tell him to go to, to his... Uh, because it's not up there anymore. That That's why, otherwise... Page? Yeah, it's not up there on the page anymore. Um, so here's what happened. All this stuff was going on. Mo Jassim has a private account, and then he created a other account um, to, to publicly post all this stuff. Um, and you'll see exactly why, because, I mean, some of the things really are pretty pretty out there the the situation of everything that was going on um again most likely this is going to burn some bridges for us but at the end of the day um this is uh, this is what's going on all right so
let me pose let me show this one so this is a um this is a message that marcel goncalves sent to mo Jassim, um and there's going to be more clarification like later on as to everything that that happened out there um here we go share screen where are we there we go let me know when when you see it got it okay so right here you see i'm sorry man but there's no karma here i think you're just trying to show how powerful you are by looking for revenge after what happened between you and cyborg at the adcc this was a message from marcel goncalves to mo Jassim. you can see it right here um and then this is something that mo posted and then you can see here what he wrote on there when he posted oh dear god help you when i post you're fueling a rage inside me and never felt in 40 years but don't worry after i explain you we'll finally understand where i am coming from you f and b um i got cut off right there but it's there um so let me see i'll pull up the other one so the other conversations that they had so obviously marcel set off um Mo yeah. on this, like, and again, again, it, who cares why? It, 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 regardless, he's taken it upon. Mo has taken the the uh, task of putting what happened with Marcel and what has happened since on his shoulders. Correct. So, so because of that. Obviously, Mar uh, Mo was bringing up the fact of everything that happened in the past uh, and what Marcel did, which, by the way, my point of view, if you're someone that is in the middle of a court case about things that you did, like your, your child like sexual abuse case, you should not have any balls to talk trash to anyone, right? You sit down, keep your mouth shut. So if you're sorry about something that you did, you shouldn't have any balls to go sit there and talk trash to anybody, right? And your lawyer should tell you to stay off of social media, stay away from absolutely freaking everyone, right? Am I wrong on that? No, not at all. Right? When you're, when, yeah, you don't talk about your case. You don't talk at all. That's the number one rule. Like, well, yeah, shut you, up, right? Yeah, you you're already stupid for doing the stuff that you did. Just shut the F up. Just shut up. And you need to get yourself a better lawyer. Like, you need to burn in hell anyway for what you did. But you need to get a better lawyer to teach you to shut up. But obviously, you're too stupid. And you're going to keep on going. You're going to push the button. So here's what's going to ha like what happens next. I'm going to pull up the, the next kind of batch of, of posts and stuff that came up. Um, so clearly, Mo was started to go off. And before he started really posting anything he reached back to the victim's father and communicated with him about what was going to happen he's like hey i'm going to start talking about this i'm going to post it are you okay with that they had the conversation and then it goes so here's i'm going to show you now the the post that started coming up after that uh, and it should be this one all right you see it Okay, so this is coming from, from Mo Jassim. It says, it's go time. I just got off the phone with the victim's father. He gave me the green light to mention we spoke and everything. He just wants his voice heard for once, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to warn you, my next post will be shocking and depressing. My jaw is still on the floor. Since this is a serious issue, I'm going to make my post by post without to make post by post without combining them to tell the story in detail. I'll create all the posts and upload all at once. I also spoke to Keith Rommel, the previous owner of Fight Sports Naples and current owner of Evolution MMA as well. Uh, all right, let me get the, the next one. Um, so this is now Mo starting to post the story that we talked about. Um, again, this is not us saying it. This is coming directly. And if they... We could just, they, if you want to read it, pause the screen. We don't need to read it to you. Yeah, we don't, we don't need to read it all. But I, I think there are some, some details here that need to, um, that need to be heard that we need to discuss, right? Um, 
Yeah, I, I think this one I just have to like read. I, I have to put it up there because some people are just listening to it on iTunes. So it says, part one, background. So the victim started BJJ at the age of 10 by walking into a random school in Cape Coral. After a few months, it was very apparent she was extremely talented at BJJ and had outgrown that gym. At the age of 11 or 12, her father took her to fight sports Naples where Marcel was an instructor. Three years ago, was a top student, crushing it in competitions nationwide. Before this, the victim and her family were extremely close with Marcel, going to kids' parties, pool parties, and she would even babysit some members in Marcel's family. Three days after the victim turned 16, she told a friend at school her and Marcel had sexual relations. The friend then went to the police, who then contacted the victim's father. There was no arrest for about two to three weeks, and Marcel kept asking where the victim was since she stopped coming to training. After a few weeks, the police arrest Marcel, and he confesses. According to the father, Marcel's first lawyer was the owner of major sponsor to Cyborg and Fight Sports. Marcel kept changing lawyers and then finally got a hotshot defense lawyer, which begs the question who is paying that total, paying the legal fees. A good lawyer will charge anywhere from $600 to $1,000 an hour. This hotshot lawyer resigned off the case, and apparently the last court date was three weeks ago. Marcel wasn't there, not sure he had to be there. Again, not us saying it. I'm literally reading exactly what somebody else posted. Uh, Mo continues, after the whole scandal broke, according to Keith Rumnell, the owner of Fight Sports Naples at the time, Cyborg contacted him and stated, you need to pay Marcel $35,000 in order to keep the Fight Sports name. Keith told him to go fly a kite and instead chose to rename his school Evolution MMA. Um, okay, so right from there. At that point in time, everything is going out on the news, Right. Cyborg denounces what Marcel did and said, you know, he's not welcome at the gym anymore. He's not part of fight sports. I want nothing to do with that. Uh, I wish I could find the the original uh, post made by Cyborg, but he condemned what Marcel did. Right. Same time. That's when I sat there. I made a post. Same thing. Said, listen, like I want nothing to do with anybody that is involved with that kind of shit. I want nothing to do with it. Took all the photos off. I had photos of everything that was going on as far as like interactions with them at a tournament, which I'm not going to get into, but like, because I don't want to put the, the victim's face or anything out there. I deleted all those photos, right? There was nothing inappropriate or nothing like that, but it was when I was taking those photos at that tournament, I felt like a weird vibe. I felt that there was something awkward going on because of the way that I saw that Marcel looked at me when I started taking photos. Something got really, really weird. And I was like, all right, like, that's awkward. I'm going to go away. Like, whatever. Three weeks after the fact, this all comes out. Now we're talking about Cyborg tells Keith Rommel that you need to pay Marcel $35,000 to keep the fight sports name uh, that's that's something that is not actually the same thing um there was uh in in cyborg statement we're gonna saying, go over that yeah you know, we're gonna but, we're, right. we're gonna we're gonna talk and about uh, it's it's got, imperative yeah yeah because it's yeah. a two different story it, it's it's a he said she well, said not really see, she, he really, said he said right but more of uh, how they looked at the uh, at the situation. Correct. So again, that's not us saying it. I'm just telling you what came out there. Cyborg makes a statement. We're going to go over that. Cyborg and Wagner make a statement about all the allegations that started going on. Now, uh, Mar or, uh, Mo continues to um, put information out there um, in regards to um, Marcel's court case about the statement that he made. Um, he says, let's see, um, Goncalves at the time admitted he was guilty of the crime. The latest development on the subject, though, now shows that the black belt will mount a defense on the count of insanity as a result of a CTE injury. Um, having already admitted to the crime, Goncalves has now presented his defense in December of 2020, as per publicly available court documents in the Collier County, Florida Judicial Court. Um, so... That's what he changed his um, defense to. Um, 
and he posts like a couple of photos of like Marcel, like the same ones that we saw before, like with him in his like uh, prison outfit, whatever. Um, um, from there, Mo started posting interactions between different people on social media. Now, Sean and I kind of debated this back and forth about whether or not we should show this. I was under the thought that I just wanted to record everything that was being said um, and everything that was posted by Mo so people understand more of how everything built up. Um, and Sean, you made the case that it's not imperative to the subject at hand um, because these are people that are not involved in the situation, which I, I definitely agree with. Um, I think it, it creates a whole different conversation in regards to people that are not involved in all this, but people that are also, um, for lack of a better word, shitting on the victim and on the father about the situation that's going on. Um, to me, again, like I agree with Sean, it's not imperative of what's going on, but if you want to read everything, go follow uh, uh, the accounts that are posting all this. Uh, I can't remember off the, the top of my head what it is because Mo created a, a secondary account. Um, it is. It's a Motar. Yeah, Motar 2K. Yeah, M O T A R 2K. And he's posting everything up on there. Um, so just. You know, go to that one if you want to read more for, for yourself. Um, what ended up happening, though, at least so you guys know, is that people were literally going back and forth with the victim's father, who was at least strong enough to go on there and debate people, where people were shitting on the dad. Like, are you serious right now? And again, again, knowing whether or not they knew it was the victim's father that's again something that can be debated as well so when people were talking well you you're saying it's up to debate but i i mean it's not up to debate the the, the and, person and no, it, it definitely is because we don't know what the people knew we don't know no i'm um, looking at i mean that's what i'm saying like that's why i wanted to show you i mean i can i can post it up right there you can see they clearly knew that the person that they were talking to was the, the victim's before, dad. Before or after is like the question. During during so, the conversation that they right, were having. Right, right. So like, bef like before, what I'm saying is they didn't start shitting on him already knowing. They, they, they were shitting on him and then found out. And then some continued to shit on him and some stopped. As, again, we don't know what they knew going into the conversation. And we right. can't speculate what they knew Right. I can't speculate what they knew, but I can tell you in the conversations that it was very it was made known that the person that was in that chat was the father. Um, so right off the bat, I can tell you, like, I'll say it straight to that person's face when I see them. You're a piece of shit. Um, you're a piece of shit and you should just keep your mouth shut. And um, if anything, you should probably make a public statement apologizing to the victim and the victim's dad. Uh, and I'll be more than happy to say to that person, like the person's face. Um, uh, anyway, moving forward, um, the 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 whole back and forth kept on going, um, and then. Uh, Cyborg started to make uh, statements. Actually, you know what? I, I didn't realize this. So I have the um, the official post that Cyborg made on March 16th, 2018 when all this situation happened. So let me share my screen so that way we can go over it again. It's uh, it's only fair that we show everybody involved and you know let you all make the um, make your your points of views based off of that. Um, so again, this is a screenshot coming from, from what Mo posted, and this was a post from Cyborg. 
that said, sexual assault can never be tolerated. This week we learned of horrifying news about an individual who used to represent fight sports at one of our affiliate gyms. The actions of this individual do not reflect what I stand for, and he will be held responsible for his actions. My heart breaks for the victim and her family. They know they have my full support. I ask that everyone give the victim and her family space and privacy as they are going through something no one should ever have to experience. And he made the same uh, statement below in Portuguese. Again, um, and this is coming from Cyborg. Uh, my statement on recent unfortunate event at one of my affiliate schools, March 16, 2018. Um, Um, yeah, and, and that's coming from Cyborg. And when all this stuff happened and he posted this, personally, I felt like, okay, cool. Like, I respect the fact that Cyborg was willing to, to at least make a statement on it and support the victim and the father, right? Which is in line to what I see, um, Cyborg as a person. I have... You know, never had any anything but positive things to say about Cyborg. Um, we've talked about him plenty of times. I've hung out with him plenty of times. Um, to me, it always seemed like a, you know, he, he's a good positive person that was supposed to be a, a positive role model. I'm not saying that he's not now. Um, you know, it's just I thought this was a, a good thing for him to do during all that situation. Um, so this was the post that we were talking about earlier. So, yeah, so we have it here. Um, moving on. Now, as the week continues, more stuff comes out. Obviously, emotions run high. People are going back and forth. Um, a lot of people start attacking Mo for what he was doing on these posts and what he was trying to say. Um, and I, I'm really, really trying not to say um and like and things like that. It, it's just, again. It's hard because we don't have all the information right there and ready to go it, no i mean i have i have everything now i was just i was missing those couple of slides it's just i am trying to be very um accurate with what i'm saying i'm not trying to to make any allegations again i am just trying to show you guys what has gone out there this week to catch everybody up on what was put out there at this point things are getting heated between uh mo marcel cyborg and continuing post uh, on uh, on social media, he now starts posting photos of Marcel at fight sports events, like community events, not just like training, but them hanging out, barbecuing, do whatever. Um, where you can clearly see several people from fight sports playing around and and hanging out with Mo. Um, it was at this point where Mo brings Wagner into the conversation and starts posting photos that were posted um, by either Wagner or people from Wagner school um, on their social media. It's, I guess, uh, at this point, I, I mean, all I can do is, is really just post it. Um, I mean, I, I got to share the screen. There, there's not much else that I can sit there and do it. The, the information's there anyway. Um, so let me go ahead and share that as well. Um, again, I, I know that doing this is going to most likely cost me friends, cost me um, relations in jujitsu. I, I wish there was anything more that I could do, but if not for nothing, I have always promised to be honest i have always promised to sit there and say i'm gonna say what i gotta say um if you if people hadn't done this we wouldn't have to have this issue it, it's just the way that it is it's, it's if we had if this hadn't happened and people hadn't made the choices that they made we wouldn't have this conversation because it's difficult on everybody but it's not as difficult as it is for the victim right it's just this. Jiu-Jitsu is a small community. I've been nothing but supportive for, for a ton of people. And I think we've probably been more supportive of other people than people have been supportive of us. Um, but at this point in time, everyone's got to know, man. Everyone's got to know exactly what's going on. You make your own decisions. I'm not here to, to you know, crucify anybody. 
Uh, here, all right, let me share this photo. Come on, where are we? It is, here we go. So this was a post that somebody made where you can clearly see Marcel uh, hanging out behind uh, the counter over at Wagner's gym. Um, Wagner then responded saying that Marcel was just there to, um, to help him set up the security cameras. He was just trying to help out someone who was in need because Wagner, his family, is very close to um, the wife and son of Marcel. Uh, let me see. And there's another photo. Um, this black font right here is uh, Mo's text, all right? This wasn't on the original. The other stuff's on original, but he's pointing out that Marcel was filming kids training at Wagner's. Now, when something like this happens, um, you're not allowed to be around kids. Well, those are his kids. Yeah, well, you're- One is his kid, and the other one is-, is You're not allowed to be around any kids. No, that's not true. You're not if allowed you to- kids. If you have kids, you can be around your kids. And that's news kids, to me. Not, yeah, I, I, I didn't know that. I was always under the impression that if you were accused or if you were under um, any any type of investigation for that, that you're not allowed to be under no, any kids. No, not at okay. all. Okay, so not at I'm, all. I'm taking your word for it. Either way, if it's now, his kids, it's his kids. Now, what? Now here's the, 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 the being is... <clears throat> If it were other people's kids, obviously there, I'm sure some parents would have uh, an, an issue. Right. Um, you know, I would absolutely have an issue. Right. But it's not illegal or anything of that matter. Um, and, and it's especially not illegal to be around your own kids. So, so um, one's his kid, the other one's one of his, one of his relations. So uh, according to um, Wagner. Right. Uh, so, so, you know, you, you, that's neither here nor there. But the, pro, you know, again, it's a problem because what is said about, or, or what was, what is known about uh, Marcel, and what people, um, you know, what people do know about Marcel and him being in the gym is an issue, yeah. and 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 one hundred percent understandable. Um, because of the charges that that were uh, set against Marcel, um, but there's also again, and it, there seems to be a lot of people that are making snap judgments <clears throat> on uh, not 100% information. Correct, and I posted something earlier today on Instagram, you know, explaining to people because. I did have people contacting me and ask me, you know, why haven't you said anything yet? You guys haven't posted anything. The only thing I posted was sharing uh, Mo's um, account, that Motar 2K account. Um, you know, again, from what we talked about at the very beginning of this, this is an extremely sensitive subject. Um, I have no qualms with putting people on blast that are uh, pedos, child abusers, sex abusers, like sexual assault, like, um, uh, people, I have no problem with that. They can all go burn in hell for all I care. I, I know I wish I could pull the lever on the chair myself. Um, what I don't want, which is going to happen anyway, is to deal with the other people that are surrounding who made their own mistakes. Um, but they are not the reason why something like this happened, right? Um, and, and that's the problem. So, so what I was saying is, is that you know, you and I discussed this at the beginning of the week, where it was like, you know what, let's not say anything. I don't want to jump into any judgments. I don't want to sit there and throw anything out there that we're going to be completely wrong on. Let everybody talk that needs to talk. Specifically, like for me, I I felt that. 
the the people involved directly that were hurt in this whole situation have a right to speak first because more eyes are on this than ever more eyes are on this whole situation and this topic than ever in the jujitsu community and the people affected have the right to speak first because they might have not been heard the first time they might not have been heard the second time and they deserve to be heard they don't deserve to be cut off by clickbait titles by clout chasing trash national inquirer version of jujitsu reporting outlets posting up the apology statements or the official statements before they post up the victims um you know statements on it um so that's really where we come from is let the people that that are in the middle of this let them have their say let them have it out all we can do is sit there and sift through the data sift through the data and you know give our opinion on the situation but let it happen like let let the man it's it's kind of screwed up to say it but it's like you know let the bullets fly and the chips fall where they may but it doesn't like the battle doesn't involve us what involves us is the the fight to make sure this doesn't happen again. And and here's the, here's the problem though, and and and, and it's just a, a simple fact. The simple fact is nobody can guarantee this cannot this won't happen yeah. again. You know, it, it's just one of those. Like obviously, we don't want nobody ever wants something like this to happen. And I guarantee you 100% uh, neither Wagner nor Cyborg ever wanted anything like this to ever happen in their schools. Knowing those people, knowing both of them as I do, I know that they would never have wanted any kind of sexual abuse or, or you know, anything like that of that nature to happen in their schools. Yeah. The problem is you can't, you can't control the actions of of anybody other yeah. than yourself like and let me be very clear in all this to my knowledge i have never heard of anything remotely close to uh, some kind of sexual allegation coming out of wagner's schools like never i've never heard that and i highly highly doubt that wagner would ever support anything like that remotely come into it I think, again, we're, we got more information to go through. I think that Wagner kind of got shafted being, being, oh man, it's tough to say it, like, but being the good person, just trying to do something good for someone that did something very, very bad. Um, because it's not just because when you destroy, like, it, when the problem is, is when somebody, when a bad person has family that you destroy when you destroy the person you you're destroying another family yeah this, and that's the thing man this, this whole thing is is one of those things that someone made a mistake not a mistake i'm sorry someone made a total fuck up was an absolute piece of shit because he was so selfish that he did not care about how he's gonna affect affect the victim how is it going to affect the victim's family how it was going to affect his wife his own family and all his friends around him that have never done anything but trying to support him right so it's one of those things it, it, it's like I, again there's there's a lot more information we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because we're discussing something based off of statements that went out there but it's one of those things that, again, we're only going off of what we know uh, and what we're reading. I'm not making any accu accusations on anybody else. I, I, I think that because someone's mistakes, other people had to make a mis other mistakes because they were, they think that they were doing the right thing or they were trying to help, and it's like this little piece of shit was just kind of, they were trying to do something good for somebody else, but it was because this person is so close to that that it's just kind of like you had he had to tag along 
and like and he was just a byproduct of everything that they were trying to do but we'll, we'll get into it more so so you guys understand it so um so mo again started just going off posting all these things posting other comments that people were making and i think the most disturbing of thing of all this outside of the initial um situation the initial event of the the assault is the amount of people that are willing to defend somebody else's actions as a mistake all right raping someone isn't a mistake right sexually abusing an underage um human being male or female isn't a mistake you know you can't use that old uh that old uh statement of like oh they they tripped and landed on my dick my bad no no man that that's not the case that's not a mistake a mistake is you crashed your car a mistake is you know you stole money uh, a mistake is you you might have plagiarized something those are mistakes taking somebody's innocence out or you know assaulting someone like that that's not a mistake i didn't accidentally shoot someone in the head that's not an accident that's an execution like you didn't accidentally destroy somebody's life you it, it doesn't happen that way it doesn't happen that way I'm, I'm not gonna say I, I do think sometimes it does happen that way. no sometimes it does happen yeah but it doesn't happen yeah. three times it doesn't happen twice at your house where your wife and your kids sleep and it doesn't happen at the gym you didn't shoot the same person three fucking times no I, I what I'm, I'm not that's not what I'm saying I'm just saying I know I know what you mean yeah 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 I, mistakes do happen this isn't something that classifies itself or falls under the the column of mistakes so to sit there and defend someone, well, you know, it's this person who made a mistake. I mean, no, man. Because what if that's your daughter? I made the mistake of going to bang your underage daughter. You, no. It's a mistake when it happens to somebody else, but it's not a mistake when it happens to you, huh? Yeah, that's not the case. Anyway. Um, so... Um, So yeah, I'll, I'll throw this one up here because I think this one is a continuation of when things really started to to really begin to boil in this whole situation. And this was a post that uh, again Mo made that said, "Well, I just woke up. One more thing: Wagner and Cyborg were both confronted about this a couple of weeks ago, and they denied Marcel was training there." So okay, so at this point, um, again with the photos that we just saw that. Um, Mo was saying that Marcel had been training there at the gym. Um, they were they were acting dumb. If they try to discredit me, I will release it. Take some responsibility. Holy shit. Also, the question remains, where is Marcel now? I've heard through many he fled back to Brazil. If that's the case, many will ask what um, was he helped. Uh, Pandora's box has been opened. And he's 100% right. Uh -huh. Here's the thing. And, and, and that's another that that right there. That's one of the problems. As I've seen it posted online, people say, "Now I've taken this this assumption and are using it as fact." Correct. We don't know that Marcel is back in Brazil. We don't know if anybody helped him. Yeah. Um, we can, that. And, and but yet people are pushing that. I've seen that online, and and it's something that people need to be aware of. We do not have again. And that's that's we where. Big, that's where we come out to like from what we were talked about at the very beginning we are only going to talk about the facts right right the the uh, speculation that marcel has fled is who knows who knows the that's what it is it's speculation it's a speculation um and whether and, and if he has fled it's also speculation as to whether or not he was helped correct Correct. So it's not fair to say, oh, so-and-so helped him escape. No. No, you, you do not know, so you cannot say that. You, you don't get to say that. You can say, I think, if you want to say that. But at the end of the day, if you don't know, don't talk about it. You don't know. 
Um, let me see. Let me continue on here. Um, and that, it was at this point where people start making memes and stuff of it, which is, I think is kind of what, which is the 21st century. That's what happens. 21st century. It, it's kind of, it's almost like uh, most people can't handle that. Um, you know, it's, um, so that's their, their way. Dark humor is their way of, of coping with the, the hard realization that this is going on. And this, this has probably happened to a lot of people. Um, and then people started trying to um, to trash talk Mo on Reddit, and this is one thing that I find weird. I really find it weird that like the jujitsu community on Reddit um, aren't talking about it as much as you think that they would. The little bit that I did see, and I, I'm not going to pull it up now, but the little bit that I did see, I see a lot of negativity coming towards Cyborg and Wagner. A lot of it's Cyborg, which I'm really, really surprised um, because this was before the rest of the information came out. Um, so now here's a, here's a story that Mo posted because, um, as we read earlier, Marcel said, you're just retaliating off of what is being like what happened between you and Cyborg in 2017 at ADCC. So I'm going to I'm going to pull that up real quick so you can see it. Um, let me just do this because I think it is part of making sure that people understand, you know, the. The. Um, the history that there is. Uh, behind this. Okay, so uh, let me close this. Um, can you see the the screen where it says, here's a story? Yes. Okay, so this is coming off of Mo's uh, Instagram story again. Here's a story less than a handful. No, ADCC 2017 West Trials, my first event ever. I booked a mega car and had Braulio versus Leandro Lowe and Cyborg versus Vinny. As many know, Braulio tore his hamstring literally minutes before the match, so I was scrambling. I asked a few people, and they declined. Gordon said he would do it, and by, by asking, he means to someone to replace Braulio. Gordon said he would do it. If you need to remember, at this time, Gordon wasn't a massive name like he is now, and style-wise, him and Braulio have a very different game. It was a sort of a high-risk, moderate gain match for Leandro Lowe, so I wanted to compensate for taking this match on 20 minutes' notice, so I gave him extra money for his purse for being a badass to accept. Cyborg then comes up to me and says, Hey, everyone knows you've given Leandro more money, and I was like, Yes, so what? He's like, Well, I want more money too, or I won't fight against Vinny. I was like, that's not how it works. You think UFC fighters all get the same? Best part is, he's like, it isn't about the money. It's about respect. I swear on my child, I looked him in the face and said, if you don't compete, I will sue you for breach, damages, and penalties. He then accepted. This is the dark side of BJJ many have no clue about. I'll say it again. Greed and self-interest is the reason this sport isn't nowhere near it could be. I'll fire off every day if I have to, so keep trying. I agree with the statement that he made where it's like the greed and self-interest and all that stuff is a big reason why jujitsu is is not to where it should be uh, for many different reasons. Not really the, the central focus, focal point of our conversation today. Um, that, I feel, does not have anything to do with the current situation, that statement. I think that was Mo's attempt at um, showing people who he believes cyborg's character is um i've never had that kind of interaction with cyborg so i can't say what's going on um do and i again i i don't think that speaks to cyborg's character um wanting fair treatment right and, and because because here's the whole thing and, and bottom line is is it's just like everything going on now People don't have all the information. And maybe Cyborg went into that um, conversation without all the information. Right. And he made a demand. He made a demand um, but that doesn't mean he's a greedy person. He just, you know, from it just might mean that he wanted fair treatment from what he saw as an injustice. Right. So now, do I believe the story that Mo is saying is true? Absolutely. I, I don't see any reason for him to lie about it. 
like Sean is saying, is there a potential for there to be a different side of the story? There's always a different side of the story. There's your, there's your side, my side, and then there's the truth, right? That's the way, like, that's the way it always goes. Um, so I can't make any, any judgments off of that because I wasn't there. This is what, what Mo is saying. I don't think Mo is lying by any, by any stretch of the imagination. I 100% believe this story is true because I'm not there for the context of what was said, how it was said. I can only go with what this was said. I, but there's, there's, no, um, there's no real opinion outside of that. Um, so when you guys see that. Um, now, here's a big kicker. This next post is coming straight from Keith Rommel. Now, Keith Rommel is the guy that we saw at the beginning uh, from the, the news report video where um, he's the owner of Evolution MMA was Fight Sports Naples. So let me go ahead and share that. Oh, my goodness. So many windows popped up. All right. Here we go. Uh, here we go. You can see it? Yep. Okay. So, again, this is a screenshot posted by, by Mo. Um, and it is a post from Team Evolution Naples. Uh, quote, this is Keith, the owner of Evolution MMA and the previous owner of Fight Sports Naples. These are the facts. Marcel was given an opportunity most people dream of coming to Naples, Florida and being paid very well to reach BJJ. I'm assuming he meant to say teach. Um, he was even given a house in Marco Island on the water to live in rent-free for years, a luxury even I cannot afford yet. Marcel never invested a single dollar, even a second of time. He always was paid into the gym. Given these facts and the nature of what he did, no sir. He deserves nothing but four walls and a bed to sleep on. And my gym, who flew your flag proudly for years, we deserve your support, but you never came in to visit the academy, even though it's a short drive away. Also, the victim deserved your support, but it seemed that Marcel received it instead. I don't think people are upset with you, Cyborg BJJ, because of what Marcel did. It's not your fault. You're right. You cannot control people and their actions, but you cannot control yours. Or, but you can't control yours. Sorry. And your support was in the wrong place given what happened. And you're, uh, you're right. We did have a good relationship up until that point. I still don't think you are a bad person and know many great people on your team. But you chose to support the wrong people in this situation, in my opinion. Which I agree. I 100% agree with what was said uh, by Keith in that statement. Now... When all this, after after a few days, because it wasn't this wasn't put up right away, after a few days, Cyborg posted a statement along with Wagner um, on two separate things. So I will show that. So I think for the most part, everybody has seen the, basically the synopsis or the summary of two or three days worth of craziness in jiu-jitsu being posted. Um that culminated all into this one situation. Um, and I'll share that real quick and I'll read it to you guys. Now, mind you, this post was not made by Cyborg on Cyborg's page. This was made on BJJWorld.tv, which I'm not a big fan of. They do steal a lot of content. Uh, I think they have very close ties to a lot of people that everything's going on, my assumption, but I'm not going to get into it. Anyway, I'm just not a big fan of them. Um, so this is a statement directly from uh, from Cyborg in regards to the Marcel Goncalves situation after all of um, Mo's posts. It's very unfortunate to have to be speaking on behalf of this topic once again. Marcel was one of my black belts out of around 150, and yes, they represent my name and carry my flag, but I am not in control of any of their actions. Being the position I am in, as well as others in our sport, can relate that when one of ours messes up, yes, we have to take heat for it, and I understand that when I stepped into being a position of a leader, uh, but people's bad choices are not mine, and they do not represent who I am or what my team represents. What Marcel did was terrible and not acceptable, and he suffers from it. It changed his whole life, and he will pay for it regardless. The situation with Keith, the man who was Marcel's partner at the gym, was strictly business and what I believe to be right. The 35000 was what would be Marcel's share of the gym. Marcel has a family, which his son is my godson, and their main, main source of income at the time was the gym. What happened wasn't their fault. They did not deserve to suffer more because of it. He deserves, as does his mom, to live a full life. 
What I wanted to happen was Keith to buy out Marcel's share of the gym to be able to provide Marcel's wife and my godson with some sort of financial security until they were able to figure out what they were going to do. Unfortunately, Marcel and Keith did not have any written agreement, so legally there was nothing that could be done. And because I believe that is what would be the right thing to do, I told Keith I did not want to do business with him if he did not think buying Marcel's share rather than taking it over to support Marcel's family, not Marcel. This was always about Marcel's wife and son being okay. And we did not agree on this, so he was no longer Fight Sports and took a different name. This is what the situation was before that. I believe Keith and I had a fine relationship and I enjoyed watching the success the gym had. As for paying for a lawyer for Marcel, if anyone is going to make those kind of false accusations, at least come with some sort of proof because that never has happened. And that's basing off of Mo's accusation saying that Cyborg was paying for Marcel's uh, lawyer fees, which don't know if that's true or not. So we didn't talk about it. That was just speculations. Sean, what's your thoughts on that statement? Um, it was just a statement of fact. You know, um, that's, that's from a fact from Cyborg's point of view. Right, right. What what he sees as the facts, that's what he posted. Um, there's nothing. I don't see anything wrong with the statement. Um, I think it was Cyborg trying to, you know, get ahead of what's going on and make sure people understood what was happening um and not just speculating like what actually is happening regardless of uh <clears throat> what he said yeah so I, I i see nothing wrong with the statement um I, and i see him taking flack for that statement as far as not apologizing or doing anything but i don't i think these people don't understand that I don't think that was the the aim of that post. That aim was just to put his side of the story out there. Right. And I, I, up until that moment, there's only been one side of that of, of the story being told. Yeah. So there is another statement that Cyborg made an, like another couple of days after this one. Um, but before we keep going, I do want to also read Wagner's statement on everything because it's only fair to him to sit there and say it. Now, I, I really, really wish that we could also get the the victim in all this, uh, the victim's dad, all this other information. But it's a lot. It's a lot. And, you know, we're obviously running on limited time on everything. But I'm going to share the screen because I do want to give... Um, an opportunity to also hear Wagner's side on it as from this post. Um, he says, I'd like to address these allegations of me supporting Marcel Goncalves. Marcel had sex with a 16-year-old minor and cheated on his wife. In doing so, I do not nor have not supported any of these activities. I have opened up my doors to his wife and his son. His wife is close friends with my wife and a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Marcel never taught any classes at my academy or at any fight sports. He would occasionally pick up his son and wife at gym. The two pictures of him in my gym were both during the first day of COVID lockdown. Uh, come on. He was there helping me set up cameras for the first day of Zoom classes. The pictures of him on the mat with the two children are his son and a relative. As for Texas and Marcel's altercation, both Tex and Marcel are birds of the same feather, who both showed up at a closed-door training session during COVID. That day, I asked them both to never come back, and I haven't seen either one of them since. Um, let me see. I believe that's, that was all of it, right? Yeah, that was all of it. Um, I feel that one was more succinct because he's not in the role of the leadership like Cyborg is. Um, unfortunately, like Cyborg has one really, really bad side in all this situation where like that, that the public sees and Wagner has another really bad side of this whole situation. Um, as far as bringing text into the conversation, that was like some whole other thing that people were, were trying to say that text was there to training. Um, man, I, I mean, all I can tell you guys is, is there's so much stuff that's going on. Just go and, and read it for yourself. This was the bulk of everything leading up to that. Um, I think w there's one or two other things that I really want to read. 
to to kind of put it out there um and this was the the statement from no you know what it's not even worth it it was a it was another conversation between marcel and mo where marcel is trying to defend himself saying that he was talking about brackets and bullshit about adcc like and again to me that guy does not deserve to even be fucking breathing let alone having like a say in any kind of conversation defending himself here's my take on all this um i i feel like we should be reading the other statement by cyborg um that was put out there um just because he got a lot of stuff thrown at him um and this was an official statement by him um, that, you know, he put it out there. It's only fair for for this man to to have his voice heard. So I'm going to put it up there, especially with everything that culminated up to this point. Um, this was on his uh, Instagram page about two days ago, which would be the 13th of August. Any worthwhile conversation starts with listening. Amidst the attack of my personal character for a crime I did not commit, I have tried to listen to the criticism of myself and my organization for the poor handling of these situations. Again, there was other allegations that have been brought up in this whole thing. It's a whole slew of things that we just cannot respectfully get into because it wouldn't be fair to everybody involved and especially the victims involved that they deserve as much attention to it it's not something we can gloss over um uh, continuing anyway to the victims and their families i'm sorry for my poor handling ill preparedness and lack of proper leadership to address the horrible experience they had to go through i have reached out privately and directly to each victim to apologize in depth for my shortcomings and to establish a line of communication with them to inform them of the actions i am taking personally and to learn from this and do better to all my students affiliates coaches and fans worldwide honest caring good people who see and fight sports a family they can trust all teams have ha have bad apples it is sometimes hard to get rid of those bad apples but i acknowledge uh we have to do better in doing so as a leader i have been expected and asked to answer for actions i did not commit and since you have asked me to do better i am trying to do so by enacting the following policies effective immediately we as men have a responsibility to not be involved in these sorts of situations. The discipline we exhibit on the mat should also be represented or should also be present when it comes to protecting and respecting our female teammates and our kids. As a leader, I have been expected and asked to answer for actions I did not commit. While no one can answer for someone else's actions, I unequivocally acknowledge that I was ill prepared to handle this situation and my response was confusing and not drastic enough at best. In trying to protect my godson, I drastically failed to address the victim adequately, publicly, and swiftly. For this, I am sorry. I failed to lead and enact harsher policy that can prevent this from happening. These shortcomings in my handling of these sort of situations ends today. That is why, having listed and learned from this, I have decided to implement effective immediately a zero-tolerance policy for all sexual abuse or sexual misconduct-related incidents within our gyms. What does this mean? If you are present with an accusation of if you are presented with an accusation of having committed any sexual misconduct in the gym, outside the gym, to another student or to anyone else, you will tempo be temporarily suspended while an internal investigation is conducted by our newly appointed sexual misconduct review board and by authorities to determine the facts. Anyone accused will be temporarily removed until an investigation determines the facts and if found guilty by our investigation or by authorities, this person shall lose their affiliation to our team immediately and their belts and ranks will be automatically taken away. We have listened and we have learned. To make sure that victims of these situations in our gyms are heard and are able to come forward, we have created the Fight Sports Sexual Misconduct Hotline, which includes a website and phone number to direct all claims of sexual misconduct within our affiliate teams. We don't want to hide behind this crisis, but rather become more transparent and more accountable because of it. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot. It, it, it keeps going. I mean, I, I don't want to sit here for this. I think this part, um, as for Marcel, let me read this wanna, last part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
As for as for Marcel Goncalves, I am stripping him of his black belt and have severed all ties between him and our organization. Um, furthermore, I have investigated and become aware of all other reported or alleged incidents of this nature that have occurred in the 19-year history of our team and stripping two more individuals of the belts I once gave them and banning them from for life from all fight sports academies worldwide. Um, and then finally, he says, as for Mojasim, ADCC head, the organizer, who is one of the people who use this platform to shed light on this issue, I would like to say the following. I do not have anything against you, and I miss your criticism. I have listened to your narrative and taken note of what I could do better. He also goes on to say, you know, I want to do, um, I want to invite you to come in, and we can talk about it, like, on a podcast, face-to-face, -face and, like, in public. Um, but, yeah, say what you're going to say, and then I will. Um, I I. I I, uh, I don't I, I, bottom line is <clears throat> he is cyborg is taking steps to ensure this does never happens again in his organization some say are too little too late some say um, it's only because he's getting caught but the bottom line is it's never too little too late because there could be potential victims in the future. And by doing this now, it makes sure that it doesn't happen. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, regardless of the motivation, this will protect people. And, and should it have been implemented before? I, maybe, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to make that call. But what I do know is that it is being implemented and and from that regardless of why people should be we shouldn't shouldn't be <clears throat> well fighting him for doing so they should just be like, okay that's a step right instead of saying instead of saying oh you're just doing this because you got caught blah 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 people should be all right this is this is a good step in the right direction and now there's there, now we can start making go forward with by taking other steps so Here's the thing. The one thing that we didn't go over, because again, lack of time and lack of information uh, on a lot of part. Again, please go follow the all the the Instagram accounts that are all involved in this, so you get everybody's angle on the information. As this started coming out, more and more people started posting their stories of allegations on other. Um, fight sports members um and it, cyborg says it like a couple of times in the statement saying it's like i shouldn't be held accountable for other people's actions which is true it's not his fault that other people did it now here's the thing if it comes out to be true like uh, some of the allegations that are coming out there now there a lot of people are saying that you know he knew about those before and he's helped cover them up i don't know I'm just telling you what's been coming out there. If that's true, that's very damaging. Um, yeah, yeah. As a as a leader, as you know, someone who's considered a legend in the martial art jujitsu and grappling and everything, which is okay. So now you're doing this. Is it too little, too late? If that comes out to to be true, where those allegations are true, they're talking about all this other stuff. Like, a hundred percent is too little, too late. It's, I I don't know. We're gonna have to just wait and see as as the things fall. But but again, it, here's here's the thing. It's not um. Not advertising something bad in your gym is not covering it right no I, and i'm not i'm not disagreeing with that it's what i'm saying is the other allegations that have been coming out more stuff that people are posting like some people are saying that there's situations where he's helped covering up which again i don't know if that's true or not i'm hoping that that's not the case we're going to find out at some point or another for sure um i i th as someone who looked up to cyborg as a role model for the sports as a person i mean i've had a i've had a, a good couple of deep conversations with cyborg 
um, the few times that I, like, you know, I got to hang out with him and talk to him and stuff like that. He's always been very welcoming. Um, so it's hard for me to sit there and say this for someone because he didn't do anything wrong like himself. Do I think he handled it wrong? Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's the thing that we didn't go over. Hold on. Here's the thing we didn't go over. Marcel's son is Cyborg's godson. So when he was saying that the 35K, he wanted it to go to his godson and the, the mom to help take care of him. Okay. Then you should have just said that. Marcel should not be anywhere involved in any of this situation. That man needs to sit there and be in jail and go and deal with all that situation. It's not fair that the wife and the son have to deal with the mistakes of the father. It sucks. Again, and that it comes down to the conversation that we were having is that he was being a selfish piece of crap. And now all these people, whether it's, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm putting blinders on and let's say that Cyborg didn't know about all the other stuff and or whatever else that like that may be going on that might have happened. And just in this situation alone, regardless of that's your godson, this comes up with Marcel. He's gone. Go. Whether or not Marcel is in the right frame of mind does not matter. People were hurt. People were damaged. And I don't care about the brand. I don't care about any of this stuff because guess what? If you would have sat there and said from the from the get-go that, hey, Marcel messed up. He was my black belt. He's like the father of my godson, but he can't be here. Gone. Not a single person would have said anything. They would have been like, you know what? Thank you. Thank you for standing up for the victim, this, that, and the other, trying to make everything do like go right. I don't know what he was dealing with i don't know what was going on like in cyborg's world i mean the guy is like he's got a million and one things going on i'm not defending him by any chance of the like stretch of the imagination but to me as someone who looked up towards cyborg i and finding this information out now like that hurts because you shouldn't have done that you should have written him off you should have told him to go fuck himself and this this all this stuff now should have happened back then again you know, it's somebody got hurt and now we're finding out more people potentially got hurt. It's like, it it is too little too late. It is too little too late because if we're talking about this was just the last one and there was other people before that, then like, where, where was everything else? So it's, yeah, but, but no, it's not too little too late. It may be too little too late for anybody that went through that. Right. And like, and I see what you're saying and it's like, okay, well you're, you're stopping the potential of this happening again in the future. That's fine. Right. Which is always the goal. You're always trying to make sure that there's never another victim. Unfortunately, it's human beings can be really, really crappy, but is it too little too late for the victim? Like, where were you three years ago? Is that victim going to be like forgiving now to sit there and say like, oh, it's three years later and, you know, like this person has been out and this person has gotten support from all these people. Am I really going to believe what you have to say? Right. So that's why like and and you and I have had the the private conversation. It's like, what if it was someone that we knew? Like, how would we handle it? And it was their family. Like if it's somebody that I knew. Right. And let's just stick to, to what we're talking about right now. If it was like with this scenario. If it was someone that we knew that did this, I'm writing them off. Never again. If you ask me to sit there and pull pull the switch on the electric chair, I'll go ahead and do it. That's I'll yeah, go. I, I'm, yeah, I can't go that I, far. I, I'll be the, the first one to sit there and do it because the damage that you did to somebody else and what you took from somebody else can no apology, no review board no hey i messed up sorry like i'm sorry i didn't do this none of that will ever fix it none of that will ever fix it it's just the way that it is we can all always do better this doesn't like this falls more under a mistake than actually sitting there and and hurting someone you still could do better what hurts me as a fan of someone is like just doing this podcast, it's probably a good chance that I'll, I'll never talk to the guy again. It, it's sad, like, I mean, but it, it is what it is. But you know what's sadder is the fact that someone got hurt. 
the fact that someone got hurt, I've always seen Cyborg and yeah. always viewed as Cyborg as someone who's a good person. But if this is true and stuff like this was either covered up or things along those lines, like if someone like Marcel was supported and and like Marcel directly, and we're not talking about his wife and, and daughter, if Marcel was supported directly... Like, I can't separate the two. That's unfortunately, the I can't separate the two. And, you know, far be it for me to judge the wife because of having to deal with it. But she shouldn't be anywhere near that guy. She shouldn't. And which, which you, again, that's not a call anybody can make. Right. It's not a call I, I could sit there and make. I just know too many female friends of mine. And I've dated girls, too, that, you know, that were sexually assaulted in the past that I don't have that barrier of forgiveness. Maybe you can consider yourself a better human being than me because you're sitting there helping somebody out and their family out. I would never do hold it against their family, for sure. I would never hold it against their family. I will hold it against their family if someone does this and they keep on supporting him. Because then well, at that point then you're 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 sympathizing to someone that's hurting people. That, well, but again, it hurt. It, it is so. It is such a touchy situation because it's got many many layers, and you cannot make a call about a family member, especially a, a, a spouse or or, um. You know, like like you you cannot fault the spouse for staying by their by their uh by their significant other simply be, you know because they don't know i mean imagine ima like again i'm not downplaying what the, what the victim had to go through but now again because this this decision that marcel made is ruined a lot of lives and not just not just the victims but his own families because he he, he made a decision a, a you know a, a reckless stupid irresponsible and and you know i don't want to go evil because i don't want to say that's that, evil i mean that's that's the the literally the the epitome of not, evil no that is not the definition of evil 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 is is when something is done deliberately for a purpose of hurting somebody and i don't know no that's not true that's not true because it's out of self-gratification too you're you're willing to do something that that could hurt somebody else for your own self-gratification and that was yeah, self-gratification it's self-gratification but that doesn't mean evil that's that's just not what e that's not what the definition of ish of evil is what evil is is an intent. Yeah, but and, see, no, you're you're getting into like a, a bullshit semantic of like, well, that's not no, technically not evil. That's, that's evil. So you're telling me like, is it not evil that now, because of this man's actions, this girl is now scarred for life, and now this is all going on because she still hasn't gotten her justice out of it. That's not evil to you. No, the, the situation. Asian is evil, but his intent matters. And I don't, I, you know, again, I, I, I'm not saying I can't call somebody evil because I don't know the person, and I can't, I can't go by off a stupid decision uh, that that was a, a gross and 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 and. But again, you know, we're, we're not talking about we're not talking about a one-time situation. We're talking about multiple times. Yeah, you're, you're, but I, that still doesn't. Like you can, I get, I, I see what you're trying to say. That's like you think that it was just someone making an ignorant, stupid choice, and right? It could, I'm, I'm saying I don't know. I'm not saying it was one way or the other, but I can't say evil because I don't know what the intent was. That's why I refuse to say right. And, and listen, it, again, like, I, like we say for everything else, you have the right to sit there and think about it the way that you want to think about it or the way right. that you feel about it, for sure. To me, when someone does that, like I find that person to be evil. They may not be freaking Hitler level evil. They're not gonna sit there and and be a you know a a Nazi Which, type no, of freaking no. evil. But to me, someone that does that and is that selfish, and now you come up with some BS like defense well, strategy to it. To me, that's that's an evil person because no, that shows you you don't have the remorse to sit there and say 
what I did was wrong is wrong. No, you're saying, well, yeah, what I did was wrong, but I did it because of this reason. All right, let, no. let, me, let, me, give you, let, me, let me ask you this. Is somebody that drinks and drives evil? Yeah, yeah, because you're selfish. Absolutely, yeah, you're I, selfish. Well, see, I don't see, I don't see them as being evil. They're I stupid. Stupid, one hundred percent. But I cannot, unless, like. But okay, so now, so let's let's take that scenario. Someone that yeah. drinks and drive once, you're an idiot. You're stupid. But now, if you're someone that drinks and drives repeatedly, without any regards of the consequences because of your choices, that's not evil. No. So what would you classify it as? Um, selfish and stupid. But you have no regard for anybody else's life. That that's not what evil is. Evil isn't. Evil. Being but again, evil Sean, be, I, and and listen, like I get it. Your definition of evil is different than intent. my definition, right? Right. It's my. It's to different. Me it comes down to intent. Right. Like anybody, if you want, like. So what do you think? Intent. So what do you think his intent was? I don't know. That's right. what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm not. That's why I say I can't make this call. Right. And call this guy evil. Right. Because I don't know what his intent. Was. And and listen and, I, again, and and I'm not trying to dig you into like some kind of like hole or anything. Yeah. Like, and this this is where you and I are are different human beings, where we can sit there and have these discussions. Whereas, I am a more black and white kind of person on certain things than you are for sure. And I'm not saying that you know my definition is 100% right and you're wrong. Like, no, at the end of the day, we both agree that this is wrong, whether whatever his intent is, whatever the end result is that this is a piece of shit who, who did something that hurt a lot of people because he was selfish. He was selfish and you can give me whatever bullshit excuse that you want about CTE or, you know, whatever, like, uh, you know, you took too much brain damage, whatever it is. I don't care. I do not care. Because at the end of the day, regardless of the reasoning behind it, the end result is the end result, which is what bothers me on this whole thing is that not only not only is, is that the situation that that happened, but if it's true that other people aided this guy in getting off of the charge, which he hasn't, he's still... He's still not getting charged. No, but like, you know, yeah. it's it's people aided on someone getting away with sexually assaulting a 16 year old girl like that's that pisses me off. And then people that go in and defend somebody saying, oh, he just made a mistake. No, it's a mistake because it didn't affect you. It didn't affect you. It didn't affect your family. It didn't affect your kid because if that's the case, if someone seriously wants to make that excuse, let your girl loose, let your daughter loose and like in a jail, go let your daughter loose at a jail. Let's see like she gets sexually assaulted. They just made a mistake. But, and, and here's the thing. It's not a mistake. It is a decision. He made the decision and it was the worst possible decision that he could have made and it, that that is what it comes down to yeah no and we're a not disagreeing with mistake, that a mistake is when you do something again it comes down to like a same thing yeah, yeah you you to, you you were drinking and driving you got into an accident that's a mistake drinking and driving you killed somebody like it's a mistake with the severe consequences that you deserve to pay for i don't care if it's a mistake you were still stupid right right again but that's a mistake when, that's when you do it once, but when you do it repeatedly, you're a piece of trash. But yeah, you're, I, you're and making, you're making, you're making, right. Yeah, you, so yeah. and I'm still what I'm still sitting there saying is that person deserves to rot in hell. If you're sitting there and aiding and abetting someone to to continue to do it and get away with doing that, then we have an issue. Then we have an issue because then I'm you're not the person that I thought that you were. And I'm not making any allegations towards anyone. And I'm not saying anything like, you know what? I'm more than happy to have this conversation face to face. I want the truth from people. And all I can do is say the people that have made all these statements, the people that are, that are, are involved in all this, we're just outsiders. Tell me the truth. Don't sit there. And I, and I hate when people have to, you know, focus on the business and, you know, make sure that all this is protected. This and that. I don't care. I just want the truth. I want people to be honest. 
that's what I want. So if I have to burn for me being honest and I lose friendships, I'm honest. You're never going to tell me that I'm full of shit, right? And then we're talking about the people that are going are, are shitting on the the family members all involved in this. Again, I'll never like I'll never shit on Marcel's wife or the godson. They don't deserve any of this. They don't. They they didn't deserve any of this. And I feel bad for the kid that he finds out his dad is a piece of trash, right? I don't feel that Wagner deserves any kind of like shit on him unless he sat there and he helped out because then that would be a conversation that i would have to sit there and have a wagner saying like hey bro like did you help out on this you know i don't know but help help out what with, with like with continuing to to support marcel in in this not his wife who support his wife and his and, and his son all day but marcel here, shouldn't be any hold on marcel shouldn't be anywhere near around no, no, anybody no, no. We, we gotta we gotta make it we have to make something clear you cannot support a husband, a wife only when they are a married couple. Anything you do for that right, wife and a, and again, kid, right, and a, a, a and that's but them. that's where I would sit there and come in and sit there and say, you know what, the for someone who's religious and the the family structure is, is a very like sacred thing. I get it, but again. This person did something. And I can compare it to a bunch of other different things. But again, I, I'm just saying that I don't want to have to pull everybody into Marcel's pool. Right? Because I, it, it's not fair. I also just don't like the fact it's like, man, why did you have to support him? Why did you have to sit there and, and sit there and have his back? That's not someone who should have, like, you should have their back. The wife and the son, 100%. Same with Cyborg. Like, man, why did you have to sit there and do that? Why did you not do this? Like, why did you not do this three years ago? Why is it that all of this had to happen and all these, and Mo Jasim had to sit there and kickstart all this stuff or respond to Marcel? And kickstart all this for you to sit there and admit that you know, oh, you handled this wrong. Right, but and again, you cannot say just because this is, and and I I know this is going to sound, I don't know how it's going to sound, and I you, you probably are going to disagree, but you cannot, um, we, you cannot say. By help, try, by trying to help the family, and giving the, you know, giving Marcel a way to provide for a family that is that is not a technically supporting, or not technically, not it. it right. No, and and no, that, that I don't disagree with you. It's not technically, yeah. but. To sit there and say, give Marcel $35,000 so he can support his family. No. No, you can't do that. If you're saying, give 35000 directly to the wife and let her deal with that as she sees fit. And does, and, and support the, the son. I get it. That's fine. Yeah, but you, can't, you can't separate those. That's the problem. But that's again, if they were no longer married, you could. Yeah, but you cannot force somebody to get a divorce. I'm not forcing anybody, but that's what I'm saying. Like to me, it's like, okay, well, she chose to stay. Right? Right. For whatever reason, we don't know. And there's gonna be people and, that say, Well, if she chose to stay, then she deserves whatever she gets. And and I don't Well, I, I don't I don't agree with that phrasing. That's not fair to say that she deserves whatever she gets. She decided to stay. She made the decision that she's going to deal with the good or bad that comes from it. I don't agree with it. That's your decision. You're an adult. But don't get mad when shit starts to hit the fan. You can't do that. I'm also not going to come to your defense. You made that decision. Right? If it was the other way around where it was like, well, she left him. She's trying hard. She's having a tough time. Listen. I'll support you for sure. I'll, I'll help out any way I can. 
for sure. Because what happened wasn't your fault, right? I, I get it. So that's what I'm saying. Like you're, you're not wrong. It, it's one of those things. It's like everything is so like specific. It's like scenario specific that it does make a difference, right? Um, and I know we're running out of time. We got to take off in a minute. Um, man, it's tough. But it kills me as someone who looked up to these people that I have to have this conversation and I can't do anything otherwise. All I can tell is like all all we can do is and and I will say this and I've, I've said this every time. Everybody makes snap judgments on half stories. Exactly. What what needs to happen is let all the facts come out. Let um, everything come out before anybody makes any kind of judgment on anybody. Right. And that's, again, and that's partially the reason why, you know, we're, we're tiptoeing on the subject. We're like, we're tiptoeing a lot of stuff. Like, all I care about is the people that, that are involved or whoever has been like um, sexually assaulted, assaulted, whatever, whatever form of wronged comes out and speaks their mind and they get their justice i want people to sit there and be honest and tell the truth don't give me the lawyer answer don't give me the pc answer give people the truth give people what happened i am stuck it's like i can't pass judgment on anything all i can sit there and do is just keep my mouth shut and say like damn like is this like I, I'm just a fly on the wall? It's like, is all this stuff really going on? Like, I'm gonna believe the victim, and we've had these conversations before. Yes, there's people that that sit there and make fake allegations for it. I don't believe for a second that anybody in this situation is making stuff up. I I believe everything that's coming out. I am in, in a weird situation where listen, I'll tell you right now. Anybody's upset with what we said here, with what I said here. If you wanna not be friends with me anymore, that's your prerogative. You know what? I, I I think it's safe to say that we were as respectful as possible to everybody. Um, you know me well enough that I, I'm pretty usually the one that's quick to write people off and tell people to, to go, you know, F off and stuff like that. And I probably would be in every right to do so here because of like the situation that's going on. All I care about is justice for the people that are they're really affected. All I want is people to tell the truth. Um I will, however, not allow things to go under the rug for because I, you and I have always supported, you know, equal uh, equality in jujitsu, um, female sports and, and this. And we're not social justice warriors by any stretch of the imagination, but no means. But this stuff has to change like this stuff has to stop. People need to stop worrying about like, well, this is going to look bad for us. No, not if you go and do right by the people that are hurt. Do right by the people that are affected. Nothing's ever going to sit there and go bad. You know what? Because if you are a good person and you didn't have anything involved in it, you got nothing to worry about. Like, But to have people like Lloyd Irving and, and, and stuff like that and situations like this, like Marcel, like to sit there and let people continue to, to like get away with stuff. No, man, I just got to stop. And that's not a social justice warrior thing. That's not a, you know, like whatever other protester BS thing that's going on. It's like, it can't, man. Like, I'm I'm sorry for for the the victims involved on in this. I, I'm sorry if people don't like the way that we approach this. There's literally no other way that I know how. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a, anybody else but myself. But it, this is too big for us not to discuss in jujitsu. But at the end of the day, this has to stop. That's it. It just has to stop. I don't care who's involved. I don't care who gets pissed off. But this has to stop. That's it. That's all I can say. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants this. Nobody's ever, like, you know, at least nobody worth being a human being wants wanted anything like this to ever happen to anybody. Um, I feel for the victims i feel for my friends that are dealing with having to deal with what's going on <clears throat> because you know i've 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 been around i've been around wagner enough that i believe him to be a very good man um and we said it i've always said that about wagner yeah um 
I've been around Cyborg not as much, um, but every interaction I've ever had with him, he's been honorable, honest, uh, kind. And, and um, same thing. And w w like, and that's the part that kills me, man, because he is someone that I've confided to in the past. I've asked questions to. I've asked, you know, like advice. I've asked, you know, just different things. I've been fortunate enough, like, to sit there and I consider him a friend. Consider both of them a friend, but definitely Cyborg a friend. So I don't sit there and and think anything bad about Cyborg, and and like I, I hope and pray that like some of the stuff that people are saying is, is not true. Like I am I you know I I am not gonna sit there and be the kind of guy be like hey bro like and, and text them like that's that's not the where we're at. I, so what but what needs to happen is people need to stop making snap judgments, which it's again. We are hearing one side of the story, and and we don't know the situations that are being that are happening. We don't know the full truths. We only know part of what of what yeah. of, of everything. So wait. All we're asking is for people to wait before they condemn anybody. Yeah. And 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 that's a, that's no. That's, there's a out, out of this whole thing. There's, out of this whole thing, there's only one person that needs to be condemned. Well, well and well, anybody that. There's not one person, but yeah. the only p person that needs to be condemned are the people that have committed crimes. Yeah. And, and it's it's up to the, it, they will get their day in court. And if they are guilty, then they will do their time. And that is what what they deserve. Yeah. They're found innocent, you know, again. But it, it, bottom line is, is we cannot make the judgment. It is not our place to make a judgment on the on anybody that wasn't directly involved with the other than or yeah. anybody that wasn't directly involved in in abuse yeah, and I, like i refuse i refuse to pass judgment on anybody especially people that that i know until i have 100 percent of the facts and we won't it'll be months before if we that, have 100 yeah if, yeah before we have 100 percent of the facts and and there's people out the problem that i another big problem that i see is there's people out there that are making accusations and are making statements that benefit if fight sports falls, that benefit if Wagner falls. Um, Listen, like uh, and, it's and, and that's 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 an iffy situation to me. If you're if you if you benefit from somebody else's downfall. Personally, nobody I'm like nobody nobody in the jujitsu community benefits out of any of this the only the only benefit that can come from it oh, and no, it, no, no, and no. There, yes there were no but there listen like the uh, yeah but like i'm saying the actual situation everything's going on what sucks is that the only benefit that can come from this which is it sucks that it has to go about it this way is that you know more people are are either going to come forward or like if something happened to them whether it's involving this situation or anything else but like more people are going to have the guts to stand up for for themselves if something like this happens no no but there are there are schools that will yeah benefit. there's always going to be someone that's going to benefit that's, from somebody that, else falling yeah right, but that that's, but that's, that's not what, what i'm what focused I'm about. about yeah I no understand. i yeah but you're and a, you're not wrong a, yeah there's a lot of people talking that 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 will gain if fight sports falls um, and, and, and it's, and I understand making a statement, but, I, but it's, it's, it's a whole nother matter to, to come in with the torches, right? When, when you, you're not involved in the situation yeah. at all, no. other than having an opinion. No. Yeah. And, and like I said, it's, I hate the fact that everything went about, came about this way. Um, I've always had nothing but respect for Mo. I, I respect Mo. Like I feel bad that he had to like use his position to to be the one to bring all this into light and kickstart all this. But I'm happy that he did to a certain extent. I'm well. I don't blame him at all. He no. He's he's, he's every he 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 went to do something right, which is what I, right, exactly. I I I like, which is why I like Mo. He's one of those people that's like, I wish I was in that kind of position. It may be as greedy as it sounds. I wish I was in that kind of position where I could sit there and just say something and everybody can go fuck themselves. Like yeah, there's nobody that can do anything. When there's nobody that can sit there and, and keep you down, that's great. 
And I'm glad that there's somebody out there that is willing, especially in jujitsu, to put that out there. Because there's been promoters that I've gone there and defended all this shit. They can go fuck themselves. Like, there's been, like, other people, some people that we even know that go and sit there and shit on on the the victim or the parents like they can all go go fuck themselves too like it's it sucks it fucking sucks um it sucks that people that we know that that we consider friends that are involved in all this i don't feel that they might have done anything maliciously i do feel that there's some people that in their circle that are shitheads like that that they can go fuck themselves too um but the people that i know directly in this situation like i feel bad for i feel bad for the victims I, I wish that none of this had to go about it this way. And again, it, it, there's a very good chance that, you know, we're going to lose friends over all this and, and, and it is what it is. But we didn't do anything wrong. We didn't do anything wrong. And I sure as hell am not going to keep my mouth shut because if something's wrong. I, I, hate, I hate that we had to do this. Yeah. But we, we had to do this because this is this is what when we signed on to be. Jiu Jitsu Radio, we signed on to talk about the big stories that go on. Well, we made we made a promise to to listeners future listeners and we made a promise to each other that it's not politics no bullshit like we were going to be honest regardless of anything and i think our friends know that our friends know who we are um but listen it is what it is and if anyone has a problem with what we said listen i'm always down to hear but um sean i know you got to go uh i gotta take off as well but um Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm sure that there's going to be something coming back from all this, but it is what it is. I don't feel we said anything wrong. I don't feel we disrespected. I think we we were as impartial as we possibly could in all this. And uh, we're just looking forward to hearing uh, from everybody and uh, and seeing what's going on. We just want justice for everybody involved. Um, We'll catch you guys uh, on the next episode.